Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. So for a patient who attended today, uh, I know it's the weekend, but it was an emergency appointment. They are a hearing aid client and unfortunately the dome, the earpiece that attaches to the end of the hearing aid got lodged in the ear. So the client took full responsibility because they were using, um, they said it's many, many different hearing aid manufacturers. Each manufacturer has a different dome that just fits their hearing aid and they used an old hearing aid dome on their new hearing aid so it wasn't securely attached and when the patient attempted to remove it it got lodged so it's a silicon dome and if you carry on watching at the end of this the procedure you'll see some images of how it fits on the hearing aid so it just becomes a bit clearer for you now because the dome also got lodged he then put a second he put he put a new dome on the hearing aid pushed that hearing aid in the ear so it further lodged this dome which then caused wax that was um, coating the canal wall to be grazed off and then impacted against the eardrum. So I'm now just removing wax off the patient's eardrum. You can see it's the eardrum, the distance is now visible. There's just some soft wax and keratin around the edge, the perimeter of the canal wall. And the patient doesn't typically suffer from earwax, so I was quite surprised. Therefore, it would suggest that this wax, it's just, it was originally just coating the canal wall. It wasn't occluding in any way. And when you graze it, this surface wax then collects into larger pieces of wax, which are then visible. And it's just carries them at the roof of the ear canal and the posterior canal walls. That's the back part of the ear canal. Just using a fine end gauge, just to gently suction that off. So I've given the patient a good um, slap on the wrist. And they're fully aware not to use the wrong domes on the wrong hearing aids, because this is what can potentially happen no harm done, um, long term anyway. Now, ironically, when we do our clear wax training course, I actually put domes in um, each other's, each delegate's ear, so the other delegate can remove it. So it's part of our training course, actually, to uh, remove a dome from someone's ear, because it, it happens more often than you think. And when you're removing a dome, typically, you, can, you can't use microsuction to remove a dome. You'll have to use forceps or an ear hook. Uh, microsuction just won't just it just won't cut the mustard. In. So the previous images was a close up of the, the exact dome that I had got lodged in the patient's ear, and this is an image of a hearing aid. So on the left you see the main body of the hearing aid. So the red um, and black uh, piece on the left. On the right you then got the dome attached to the silver block, which is a speaker. That's we call it the receiver and there's a wire connecting to two. So the sound enters the microphone at the back of the hearing aid. Inside the body of the hearing aid, you have the processing and amplifier chip. It calculates how much sound the patient needs per frequency based on their hearing test results and other factors as well. That signal is then transferred to the silver block, the speaker via the, the tube, and inside that tube is an electrical cable. And yeah. The speaker goes in the ear and for patient comfort and also to, to obtain a good acoustic seal, there's a dome attached, there's different types of domes. So this patient had a large power dome, which um, is indicative of people who have more of a, a moderate, severe or profound hearing loss. And so that dome attaches to the end of the speaker. It can be replaced, simply removed and reattached. But I hope you enjoyed that video, guys, and you had a bit of an insight of hearing aids and, and how they work and also what um, foreign bodies we're, we, we can remove from the ear and we often see in clinic. Take care, bye.